guys, welcome to Weekly Weird News, and this episode is sponsored by Vincero, a fine luxury watch company with fine luxury watches for all you young go-getters, and we're going to tell you more about them later in the show, but first, the news. Yeah, so these are politically charged times here in America, obviously, and uh, a lot of the time that means, at least for us over on our side of things, being annoyed and frustrated and depressed about what goes on in this country. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, out of the chaos and madness, comes a story that brings us joy. We have such a story for you today, though it might not be your particular cup of tea. So before we get into it, let's establish some things about ourselves, things we hate. GoFundMe and the weird, sad culture that it's created where people expect strangers to chip in on everything. Now here's the thing. I do like GoFundMe because I have used it to pay <laughs> Sadly, it's 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 the universe that it spawned where it's like You're talking about the culture. Yeah, the culture of it, because I have donated when friends get deathly ill or sure. die and have to sure. pay for funerals. But it's sad that it has to be through GoFundMe. Yeah. And that there isn't some kind of safety net. Sure. That's okay. what we hate. Yes. Another thing we hate, uh, the online magosphere, the uh, state of our culture where people like Jacob Wall are considered influencers just because they're under 50 and they love the president. No matter what. L very loudly. Now things we do love, black Twitter. Yeah. It's a scientific truth that black Americans are just better at Twitter than their white counterparts. It's true. The exact reasons why remain unknown. It's just a fact. Uh, you might be scoffing at that, but you also probably said, this ain't it, chief. Out loud, within the last hour. Or weird flex, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see you. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna argue about this. Anyways, another thing we love, good, effective online trolling that isn't necessarily hurtful, but does make a person or a group of people look very stupid. This story that we're about to tell takes all of those likes and dislikes that we just listed and distills them down to their perfect form. Yeah, so now it's worth also noting first that our current president's approval ratings among black people in this country are pretty low, especially when it comes to younger black people. Young black Trump supporters, they exist, they're out there, but there's just not a lot of them. And there's many reasons for all this, mm -hmm. but basically this helps explain why Republicans are so eager to embrace people like Kanye West as their own, despite Kanye West demonstrably not really knowing a lot about Donald Trump or history or politics, and also being a notoriously eccentric person who is prone to manic behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, since there aren't a ton of young black Republicans, when one is spotted out in the wild, they're often quick to prop them up and say, see? The blacks, they love us. Now, come join us, the rest of you young blacks. Mm -hmm. So this brings us to Chickpeas. That's her Twitter handle, and we're not sure what her real name is, so we're calling her Chickpeas. On October 27th, Chickpeas tweeted out this photo of her in a Make America Great Again bucket hat, which we didn't even know existed. Uh, but it also had this caption alongside it. I will not hide any longer. The left has made us feel as if black Republicans should hide, but not anymore. Hashtag blacks for Trump. Hashtag walk away. Hashtag MAGA. Though so later that day, she tweeted another photo of her in that hat with the caption, you are all just jealous that I love hashtag Trump and I'm hashtag black and I'm hashtag beautiful. Hashtag MAGA. Hashtag tw Trump 2020. Hashtag blacks for Trump. Hashtag black Republican. Hashtag walk away. Fucking hashtags. Christ. But those hashtags. Yeah. They got her the, the attention that she desired. Yes, very quickly, thanks in large part to her very effective use of hashtags, her tweets spread throughout the Twitter magosphere like wildfire, where she was praised for her bravery and was retweeted thousands of times. It also spread throughout black Twitter, where the reception was less positive though, but the negative responses from fellow African Americans was not just on Twitter, it was also at home. Four days after those initial tweets, Chickpeas tweeted, Thank you all for your overwhelming support. After seeing this tweet, my parents cut me off and refused to pay my university tuition. So if you can find it in your hearts to help this young black Republican pay for school, it would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. American flag emoji, GoFundMe link, hundreds of retweets. Yeah. So out of the woodwork, mm -hmm. here they came to help. Now, meanwhile, many of Chickpea's followers began to accuse her of lying, but she insisted in multiple tweets and replies that she was for real. I mean, really, it, is it really that unbelievable? You're saying a young black woman could never support our president, Donald J. Trump? Sounds a bit racist to me, buddy. <laughs> Anyways. You're uh, the real racist. <laughs> Anyways, the day after GoFundMe, uh, the GoFundMe tweets, Chickpeas revealed that her family situation had gotten even worse. Her stubborn Democrat parents simply could not accept their daughter's new free-thinking th free ways. She tweeted, I'm now getting kicked out. 
My mother literally woke me up out of my sleep and screamed at me, how could you support this monster? She doesn't even know him, so how can he be a monster? I just wish they understood. Parents never understand. Hey, yeah. I mean, being Republican, that's the new counterculture. It is. It's like, the, it's like punk rock in it's the, the 80s and 90s. It's new punk rock. Yeah. Yeah, it's new hip hop. Mm-hmm. It's the real counterculture. Come on. Uh, in response to more speculation that she might be lying, Chickpeas even provided proof. Screenshots of a text message conversation with her mother in which the mom tells her to get lost and says that she might as well not be her daughter anymore. All while Chickpeas begs and pleads not to be ostracized from her family just for thinking independently. It really pulls at the heartstrings seeing how young, independent thinkers are being treated in this country. Sad. Mm -hmm. Except, yeah, in the least surprising turn of all, Chickpeas revealed later that day that this had all simply been trolling. Mm -hmm. She wrote, Trump is a racist, homophobic, transphobic bigot, and you think my black ass would support that rotting carrot? Ridiculous. Any black person that can put on that ugly ass hat and say MAGA, and y'all will instantly be up their ass because you want to prove so hard you're not racist. So yeah, at this point, she'd apparently scammed $150,000 off her fake MAGA GoFundMe. Uh, so she was immediately accused by MAGA Twitter of being a giant thief, having stolen all those people's honest donations with her lies and trickery. But Chickpeas had no remorse whatsoever about this, tweeting for days about how she was spending all her GoFundMe money on brand new iPhones, rent, and college tuition. Cool. Her sudden fame and popularity among Trump supporters on Twitter quickly turned to contempt, with many users saying she better lawyer up because crime had definitely been committed here. Uh, meanwhile, over on Black Twitter, Chickpeas was being hailed as a hero. One user wrote, this is up there with Charles Ponzi and Jordan Belfort as one of the greatest finesses of all time. But this whole grift, it has so many layers to it with people on all sides getting fooled to you know, varying degrees. Because the, the $150,000 that the Trump people were so mad about and that the anti-Trump people were so overjoyed about, uh, it didn't actually exist. Mm. On Monday, journalist Alex Bruce Smith of 10 Daily tweeted that uh, she'd actually looked into it and reached out to GoFundMe and found that Chickpeas donations had totaled just $97 from four donors and uh, it had also all been refunded. Yeah. Uh, Chickpeas, she backed this up on her own Twitter tweeting, before I go to sleep, I just want to know why no one on Al Gore's internet thinks critically or reads an article outside the title or the preview. Y'all truly are dumb if you think my college educated ass is bragging about committing multiple felonies on the internet or that you can't do chargebacks on GoFundMe. Yes, the hypothetical finesse would be one for the books and be incredible, but if I got it like that, I would not be tweeting like this. Mm, there you go. The the rare triple or quadruple finesse. Yes, I mean, she finesse everyone. She actually- The truth kept changing she and actually it was never the truth. Completed what Jake, in a less serious way, what Jacob <laughs> Wall had tried to do by tricking a bunch of press outlets into just reporting exactly what was being said and not looking into it. She's, she's gonna do great things one day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in interviews with New York Magazine and Elle Magazine, Chickpeas explained the whole process of this historic troll. She said that she is in fact taking a semester off of university to save money, uh, but while visiting some friends still in college, she discovered that weird MAGA bucket hat lying around on the ground on campus, probably after a sick fucking rage bro. Uh, she decided to just test how gullible Twitter is, particularly MAGA Twitter. She told Elle, the Republican Party needs blackface, so they throw money at any black person that says they support Trump so that people stop thinking of them as the racist party, but it's never going to happen. They also fail to realize that they don't have to outwardly hate black people to be racist because they still create policies and laws that keep black people poor and unsupported, especially the three strikes law that they love to uphold. And it does nothing but send poor black and brown people to jail for the rest of their lives. But we're supposed to ignore that and say that suddenly they're not racist because they paid a black girl's tuition? It's laughable. As for the money, she admitted that, yeah, there had never been a whole lot of donations and that in the end, she hadn't taken anyone's money. Uh, she told New York Magazine, I just honestly didn't want to take their money. Yeah, I can't pay for school, but I don't want Republican money to pay for it. I just want everyone to think I'm the finesse queen, which I am. Yeah. <laughs> and I think she is. And in the end, Chickpeas got to engage in some masterful, high profile trickery without breaking any laws, proving for the millionth time that social media is making everyone dumber and more gullible, all while exposing how overly thirsty the Republican Party is for young non white members. It was masterful. And it was the work of a great mind who, once she can't afford to go back to college, will surely go on to do great things. Mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking about sending her some money myself, <laughs> since we're, we are using the, her story here. I mean, yeah. It's only like, fair. I love the, the, there was one tweet where someone that she knew like called her out and like, what are you doing? Shut up. 
<laughs> oh, also after we recorded this, Chickpeas actually posted a YouTube video in which she explains everything herself, so definitely check that out if you want some more insight into all this. Uh, we'll leave a link down in the description. Speaking of like hilarious laws, it was, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Scott Walker. He signed a law. Oh yeah, <laughs> where it was like you can't do a recount uh, unless it's if it's if it's more than a one percent. One percent, and he lost by one point two percent, which is the big one of the greatest cell phones of yeah uh, in of a the, year, this in, election. In a year of cell phones, the Scott Walker cell, cell phone. phone is uh, probably the largest magnitude of a cell phone. Yeah. So you literally pass a law that ends up preventing you from even appealing your lost election. Oh, Incredible, beautiful. Now, meanwhile, speaking of politics, three former Weekly Weird News characters from the world of US politics participated in Tuesday's elections. And guess what? They all won. Woo, that's a win for this show, Weekly I guess. Weekly Weird News characters <laughs> won elections. They did. And no, it's not Malachi Love Robinson, although I am sure that when he gets out of jail, he will pursue a career in politics. He's probably like- uh... He's studying, studying up right now. Whenever that book cart comes wheeling by the jail, you know, I keep, I, I, the other day I was thinking about this, I was like, we should write him a letter. Yeah. Like, we're like, we, we probably, we owe him like, at least like. A letter. He's probably bored as fuck in there. We should write him a letter. If we make like, Malachi pins, we should send him one. Yeah, we should. Yeah. I'm going to write him a letter. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> uh, first up though, uh, going back to what we were saying, how Weekly Weird News characters actually won elections, which is still weird to say out loud. Mm -hmm. uh, first up, remember Denver Riggleman? <laughs> The Virginia congressional candidate who is not only super into Bigfoot, but also possibly, almost certainly, <laughs> writes Bigfoot erotica. Mm. He won, defeating his opponent, Leslie Cockburn, who's also the mother of actress Olivia Wilde. So there you go. The, yeah. the, the guy who is obsessed with Bigfoot's throbbing, Harry Cock. He might be a little bit into Bigfoot's weird dick, but you know what? He's got Virginia values. Unlike that Olivia Wilde's mom, she's got her brain all full of worms from Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Wants to turn everyone trans. Yep. Well, at least you get, hopefully they make a law about Bigfoot in bathrooms. Yeah. Think yeah. Bigfoot gets Because I bathroom. actually would be scared of Bigfoot in a bathroom. Yeah, he probably takes horrendous shit. Yeah. I'm not going in there. And he bumps into something and just topples over because he's so gigantic and huge. Yeah. Leaving huge footprints everywhere. Although. Probably doesn't wash his hands. Although. Or her hands. You know, Bigfoot, if we're gonna make a public toilet for Bigfoot, you need a big dick. Probably gonna, <laughs> you're gonna need a special toilet yeah. to account for that long dick that's hanging down there. I always thought the hole in the bottom was where I placed my giant penis. <laughs> <laughs> just sucks it out. You yeah, flush yeah, the toilet yeah. and the pressure just it <gasps> sucks it dry. Yeah, your balls shrivel up. It's great. <laughs> now, meanwhile, uh, Greg Gianforte, the carpetbagger congressman up in Montana who previously won a special election back in. May of 2017, despite literally body slamming a reporter from The Guardian the day before the election, uh, he was re-elected by the fine people of Montana. Mm -hmm. Great job. There you go. And finally, over in Nevada, or Nevada, whatever, brothel owner, pimp, Dennis Hoff won his race for a seat on the Nevada State Assembly. And he did this despite being dead for nearly a month. And being his body was found by Ron Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah, he was partying with Ron Jeremy and Grover Norquist, mm. and uh, yeah, just partied a little too hard, you know? He's, uh, he was he was pimping for like 50 years, but a couple months in politics. That'll do it that'll, to you. That pushed him over the but edge. he still won. He won, so yeah. uh, I guess they're just gonna have to wheel his body around for four years like Weekend of Bernie's, that's the rules, right? Nope, the GOP gets to pick the person who Okay, that makes them. more sense. What? All right, well, anyways, God bless America, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Now, before we move on to the second half of the show, we got to give you a quick word from this week's sponsor. They help keep this show alive, and their name is Vincero. Vincero. Are you looking to increase your perceived success and wealth without paying a huge price tag? Vincero has a modern and contemporary style that looks bold and professional. Get the watch built for a boss. Yeah, it's time to step your game up. It's time to stand out. A luxury watch does not have to cost you a fortune, and you will see why when you check out Vincero. Every watch is manufactured and quality checked by hand before being shipped out to you, the customer. This is the kind of attention to detail and dedication to quality typically only seen with luxury watch brands that can cost over $500. Well, guess what? Vincero watches start at a little over 100. And don't you think I'm not putting my sponsorship where my mouth is because I am literally wearing this at my wedding next year because it's the nicest looking watch I own. I attended a wedding a couple weeks back and uh, wore my watch and I felt I felt quite dapper. <laughs> Much better than, than just 
Look try to get your phone for the time. Yeah, try to find my cell phone, and it's all mm -hmm. like sticky. It's making a big bulge in my Because it would be very awkward if my phone went off while I was doing my vows or something. Or while you're just sitting there. Do do, 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 do. Hold on, let me get this. Yeah. But then you film it, you sell it to the movie theaters, and they're like, don't be like this guy. Silence your phone. Yeah. Soon enough. Now, with over 11,000 five-star reviews and a two-year warranty, you can shop with confidence. Go take a look at these Vincero watches. Uh, we know you'll love them as much as we do. Uh, if you want to support the show and get, a, get yourself a watch, head over to vincerowatches.com slash WWN and enter the promo code WEIRD15, and you're going to get 15% your, off your entire order. Don't blend in. Stand out. Again, get your Vincero watches at V-I-N-C-E-R-O watches.com slash WWN with promo code WEIRD15. And now... Let's get into the weirdest headlines of the week. Starting with my favorite. Man without pants falls through Alabama Waffle House ceiling. And he had been living there, right? No. Okay. That was uh, people. That, that was more fake news? Well, the tweet that like went viral with it was mm -hmm. like, said this guy had been living up there. No. He actually had gone into the bathroom to do meth. Oh. I think he got too hot, so he took his pants off. Mm -hmm. and I think he, like, tied the door shut or something with his pants. Well, you're going to want to keep the door shut uh, when you're doing meth in a Waffle House bathroom. Okay. and then But then he climbed up into the, like, ceiling panels uh -huh. and started foraging around until he was above the restaurant. And everyone in the Waffle House is like, the hell's going on up there? What's going on there? There's, like, a bulge. You can all hear it. Yeah. Uh, well, which, which is weird. You would assume it would be way hotter up there because of, like, the, the stove that they cook on and I'm the sure exhaust. I'm sure he probably went in there, like, thinking this is a good idea, and then he's like, ah, oh, shit, this is a bad idea. But wait, which way is back? I'm not sure I'm he ever meth. thought it was a bad idea because of the meth. Well, anyway. Well, uh, you know what? Not wrong because he lived there for a little bit. He, well, I mean, I'm living <laughs> here right now. Yeah. Yeah, we're just living, baby. So anyway, he falls out. Uh, <laughs> apparently, like, the staff and all of the patrons all were, like, trying to, like, tackle this guy. Everyone was very upset. You don't mess with someone on meth strength. Yeah, uh, but he managed to escape, and as of when we're filming this, he is still at large. Like, they know who he is, but he managed to escape from that Waffle House ceiling and has thus far evaded all law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Not like those people who tried to, to do that at the uh, gas station. What was it, in Canada? That was incredible. So, yeah, that was a fun crime. Well, uh, not really, but I thought it was fun for me. It being Waffle House, I thought he would have fallen through through the ceiling and they would have just been like, all right, how do you want him? Smother recovery. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Although on meth, I don't think you have that much of an appetite. No. So probably just get something to go for later. No. I'll get a sweet tea and a smothered batch of hash browns and do it in a goddamn hurry. Cops are on their way. Uh, moving on. Dog shoots man. Man survives. Defends dog. He didn't mean to do it. He's a good dog. How'd the dog shoot him? Uh, with a gun. Well, when, yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, this guy, this old man, he's like 75. He's taking his uh, taking his dogs out to do some jackrabbit hunting in New Mexico, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had his favorite dog. He had two dogs in the back, but he had his favorite dog up in the front seat with him in the truck. Yeah. And uh, I guess his gun, he didn't really have a rack for it or a case for it. It was just sitting like on the floorboards facing up with yeah, the barrel literally sense. facing He's his lucky body. the dog didn't kill himself. <laughs> yeah, so the dog, you know, is just scurrying around and then, broop, steps on it. And uh, it says it was a shotgun, but then it described it as a bullet. So I have to assume he shot himself with a slug. Which, like, it, it took out, like, three ribs, his collarbone, Jesus. went through I mean, a It could lung. have been a bunch of, like, shotgun shells or something. I, I mean, maybe. We'll, I, I bet he buys a gun rack now. Probably. Well, yeah. It is, I mean... <laughs> If that had happened to me, or probably anyone watching this, like, yeah, you'd be like, what would you be like? To press charges on the dog. <laughs> Officer, arrest this dog. Put this dog down. This dog is a bad boy. Yeah. So, I mean, you yeah. live and you learn. It's not the dog's fault. It's the guy's fault for yeah. putting a uh, <laughs> loaded gun, loaded, uh, ready his... to fire weapon yeah. in the car with him while he drives mm -hmm. with a large dog with a gun pointed at his chest. Yeah. What he should have done is put both dogs in the front and put the gun in the back. That way, when it bounces around, it just shoots other <laughs> other passersby. Man, I gotta stop loading these guns and unsafetying them and putting them in the back of my truck while I drive over dunes. <laughs> what why, was I thinking? Why is everyone honking at me? Uh, uh, nearly 1,000 human teeth found in walls of Georgia building. Hmm. This was in Valdosta. Your oh. Favorite, your favorite city of Georgia. Oh, wow. What, what kind of building was it? Uh... I guess it was, it was formerly a dental office, but well, like that makes sense. Where they, I, it sounds like they just like ran out of teeth. I don't know. They 
So, a thousand teeth. That's a lot of fucking teeth. Yeah, that's like, not that's them, dude. decades of teeth. Yeah, maybe. And they were just like storing them in the fucking walls or something. Just like, ah, oh, more teeth. Just like, God, how do we get rid of all these teeth? They probably had one just of those. Just put them uh, in the walls. They probably had one of those like little uh, basketball hoops. Yeah. And they were just like, <laughs> boop, every time. Like, you gotta keep busy, you know? There's yeah. only so many people in Valdosta, Georgia that can afford dental health care because f- fuck if I'm getting it taken out of my taxes. Yeah. They only need two teeth. Yeah. The ones that open soda cans. <laughs> Oh, Valdosta, I hate you, and there's a reason I left. Angry mob tosses Ukrainian politician into the trash. <laughs> it's like what this happens This is the to... kind of mob violence that I'm completely fine yeah, with. Yeah, it's like, it's like uh, when people protest bird scooters, except <laughs> it's with a human. Yeah, I mean, and this guy, it sounds like he deserved it. Like, he's uh, one of those, like, very, like, Russian stoogy Ukrainian politicians, and he's campaigned, like, very strongly against protesting and demonstrating. Yeah. So, at a protest... He happened to come by, and the protesters just picked him up and tossed him in a dumpster. He's, and then they poured water on him. <laughs> and then they hey, left. That, at least that's all I got, but he's probably going to embolden him even more to stop protesting. The picture of him, he's like in there, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa hey, let's talk this out, guys. <laughs> Over $61,000 donated to Maywood teacher arrested after video showed him punching student. And it's... There's a reason for that. It's not just because people like watching students get punched. I although, like, I'm, <laughs> although I'm sure there's a lot of people like that. I like his style. We need more teachers to punch students. Here's, I love here's corporal, my money. corporal punishment. Mm. Mm-hmm. No, he, he punched the kid because the kid, uh, I think, called him the N-word. And yeah. Threw a basketball at him. Yeah, he was racist <laughs> and was abusing this teacher. So. Yes, uh, and uh, all these donations are coming from people uh, who uh, have reason to believe that he's normally uh, a, a great pretty, teacher. Yeah, pretty level-headed guy probably. Yeah, who is pretty... Good at his job when you're not calling him the N-word mm-hmm. in his classroom. Yeah. In his own damn classroom. Do you think the kid learned his lesson? Uh, I don't know. His family's probably going to sue and, like, I don't know. This so, is, so, no. No, no, no. No, I mean. Well, he's going to get the settlement gonna money. He's going to learn a very bad he's lesson. He's going to get the settlement money. He's going to go out and buy a brand new Dodge Charger or a Ford Mustang. 25% interest? Sounds good. Sounds good to me. And he'll be broke very soon. So, there you go. Yeah. That's how it usually happens. China grants more trademark approvals for Ivanka Trump firm, including voting machines. Oh, Ivanka Trump branded voting machines? Mm, what could possibly go wrong? I don't know. But what? But have they said anything about the soybean farmers? <laughs> I don't think so. I love the irony that, like, you know how, like, there was, like, the Got Milk ads and, like, there's like there was a huge push for, like, corn because it's, like, surpluses. Like, we have this huge surplus of soybeans, and I'm wondering if, like, the next government-mandated uh, marketing strategy Drink soy milk. is drinking soy milk or, con- con- like, consuming tofu or anything with soy in it, and then it'll be the conservatives that are the soy boys. Yeah. I'm proud to be a soy boy. <laughs> it's got twice as much protein as normal milk. <laughs> Cowboy steps up on a thing. And it's more ethical for animals. I've been squeezing teats for the better part of a hundred years, and even I drink my soy milk. It's vanilla. <laughs> oh, wow. I love my bean juice. Uh, anyways, that's uh, the, that news is bad. Yeah. Very bad. Um, yeah, seems seems like a conflict of interest. At the very least. Yeah. <laughs> At the very least, yeah. Uh, Bill Gates brandishes poo to showcase reinvented toilet tech. Bill, have you been watching the show? Uh, he's, he, so this was at a toilet convention, which oh. I didn't even know existed. It already happened Flush this year. Fest. But we need, it's, it's called like, I think it's called like the Reinvented Toilet Technology Conference. Why don't we like go that. there? I know, next year we need to go there, with, with, uh, just rent a single small booth, have our blueprints and be like. We gotta figure out like someone, like a cosplayer that's good at making like armor and shit and just have them whip together a, a concept of a big dick toilet mm-hmm. and be like, well, this is just the concept. We're planning on going into production very soon and we need you. And then once you give them the pitch about how like no guy is not, he's, you're not gonna own a small dick toilet. Yeah. Just start calling every other toilet small dick toilet. Tiny dick toilet, nice tiny dick toilet you got there. Yeah. Oh, is that a toilet for ladies? So uh, you like getting your tip all wet when you're pooping? We're, we will simultaneously will put Hooters out of business because they will buy every big dick toilet that we produce. Yeah, Mm-hmm. good. But yeah, he he get up on stage. He's in the toilet business now, because he's all about eliminating like malaria and shit. And mm-hmm. he brought up a big old jar full of poop. He's like, "This jar of shit right here is just full of bacteria. Look at it. It's disgusting. We need to do something about this." And then he got out. He put it on a table and got out a big mallet and just <laughs> smashed it like Gallagher. <laughs> How much you gonna pay me to smash this? <laughs> and then the front crowd puts up their plastic. He, he pours it all out over a chair and he's like, "I'm gonna jump over this chair completely." And he jumps over the chair. Check it out. No poop on me. Not a single piece of poop on my shoe. I made it. 
Anytime we get to bring up the Bill Gates jumping over a chair thing, it's, it's a great day. Bill, I've heard that you can jump over a chair. Not only will I confirm that I can, I will demonstrate it right now. <laughs> that was with Connie Chung, wasn't it? Yeah. There you go. It's classic. Classic. Yeah. A woman convicted of embezzlement charged with embezzling to pay restitution. <laughs> the old, uh... I mean, we uh, have first-hand experience working with someone like this. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times, people get away with it because companies are too embarrassed to publicly, like, take you to court. It's like, yeah, it's or it's like, what are you going to get back? Like, in yeah. this case, the lady obviously had no money, so she had to yeah. embezzle from somewhere else. I mean, this is the same. This is the equivalent of, like, taking out a loan to pay off your credit card. Yeah, it's a bad then, idea. And then taking out a loan to pay off... The loan. Well, let's see, my credit card is a 21% APR. This loan, I mean, if I get a loan for like 15%, I could pay it off, and then I'm kind of saving money, but then, oh, nope, I'm just gonna fuck it all up again because the Because I'm buying a yeah. Dodge Charger, Time baby. to get a Dodge Charger. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the closest Dodge dealership there is to Camp Pendleton. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna put $200 down, and I'm getting the Charger. Yep. Uh, anyways, yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Bad, bad, yeah. not a cool crime. Don't embezzle. Driver gets two speeding tickets in two different cars in same morning from same Royal Canadian Mounted Police officer. RCMP. Yeah. Uh, cool. I didn't know horses ran that fast. See, you would assume that many horsepower would beat one horsepower. Yeah, it seems like uh, in Canada, you can get away with speeding as much as you want. You're like, what are you going to do? Chase me on your horse? See you. Yeah. If it's anything like uh, Red Dead, you just feed a couple biscuits and you can run uh, fast forever. Yeah, nice try, Dudley Do Right. Yeah. No, but uh, apparently they use cars now. They just change their name. Losers. Royal Canadian Car Police. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, how did he have two different cars? Because he bought them both down at Camp Pendleton? Actually, it was a woman. How did she get <laughs> two different cars? Did she buy them down at Camp Pendleton and then take them back to Canada? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it was, they didn't explain. The story was like one line of text. I'm like, yeah. what? Was well, to be fair, most, I think, families, at least older people, have two cars. <laughs> it's like, no, this is my this is my daily driver. I take this, this one for this fun. This isn't that I take out on the weekends. I was on my way to the track. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, don't do that either. Yeah. <laughs> the headlines are usually just a uh, don't do a that. recipe for not doing things. Things not to do. Or else you're going to end up here, and then we make fun of you. Yep. Anyways, uh, check out our most recent episodes. We have a brand new episode of News Dump. We, there's actual good movie news this yeah, week. We positive. Did it, we did it before this again, so be sure to check out the new episode of News Dump. Uh, and also, check out a new episode of Tech News Day where we talk about how aliens have been spying on us, potentially, from a turd machine. Aliens. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye-bye.